Sam, welcome. <laughs> welcome to the podcast. How are you doing today? Thank you. I am fantastic. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Very well, thanks. Glad to have you on. Um, I came across you via um, SEO FOMO, um, across the post that you guys had around um, schema implementation, and I thought you would be an excellent person to speak with, especially around the um, um, implementation part of things. Um, it was a great post, by the way. I, I, I think it's a brilliant um, Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, uh, Begum uh, was my partner for that piece, so uh, we had a lot of fun writing it. Um, just uh, schema is a love of mine, so happy to talk about <laughs> it anytime. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So it's your first time on. Um, as I like to do with all my um, guests, um, SEO guests, I like to ask them how they somehow found SEO or how SEO found them. So with that being said, how did you venture into the SEO industry? Oh, it's a, it's a bit of a, it can be a very long and convoluted journey. Um, so let me it. try to do the short version. Um, <laughs> so I actually started as a web developer. So I started coding websites professionally at 16. I say professional, I'm defining that as when people actually started paying me for it. <laughs> wow. um, so I did that for a long time. And then when I was in college, I was uh, building and maintaining websites for gaming organizations that I was a part of. Uh, and so because of that, we were always trying to recruit, trying to find new people to join our, our gaming communities. Um, so I started trying to learn SEO and kind of understand like, hey, when when people are looking for, you know, like I said, just that community, how do we make sure that we show up? Um, and then at the same time, I was in college studying marketing, thinking that I was going to be going into branding or merchandising. <laughs> I look back now and I'm like, ha, that's funny. Um, <laughs> But then I uh, got my first job uh, doing all the marketing for a SaaS company after college um, and then switched to agency life, which is when I really started specializing in SEO because at the SaaS company, I was the only marketing person, so I did everything. Right. Um, but once I went into agency life, like I say, I got to focus on SEO and uh, it's, yeah, it's my favorite channel I've had. Uh, thankfully, the chance to go back to leading integrated campaigns across all kinds of channels, um, mm -hmm. but SEO is still just always my first love. Um, I think it's the most fun, probably because it is the hardest to, um, I don't know, sometimes it's the hardest to measure. It's it's the most art form, I guess, I think, <laughs> of all the different digital channels. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so like most SEOs who have been here for over 10 years, uh, I fell into it and had no idea that this is what I'd be doing <laughs> with my career. No idea it was a thing, right? <laughs> exactly, yes, yes. So would you say you're um, more tech-led? On page content or more of an all rounder with all, all um, uh, pillars of SEO? Uh, so I'm probably know enough about the pillars to be annoying to other <laughs> channel owners, um, but definitely more tech led. Um, so uh, the company that I get to run with, Tori Gray, uh, we are a tech and strategic SEO firm. So Mm -hmm. We're really thinking about the technical aspects. Um, so really tech SEO. And then the other piece that I specialize in would be data. So right. from your analytics programs and measurement to using things like keyword research to inform other parts of your business, uh, that's really where we specialize and we get to have a lot of fun. So okay. yeah, tech SEO and data is what I tech do. And data. Almost right. every Got day you. now. <laughs> Got you. So mm -hmm. being in um, yeah. agency side, I am sure you come across a number of clients that um, receive a recommendation or a strategy, an SEO strategy, and they have this mountain, what well, seems to be a mountain to climb, to actually have the recommendations implemented. <laughs> Tell me about your experience mm -hmm. in, in, uh, around that. Oh, uh, so <laughs> I think, oh man, where to start? Um, so when we've had those, I would say probably earlier in my career, I would try to fight every battle and draw the line in the sand and demand that everything has to be perfect or it's never gonna work. Mm. Um, I think something that has come with more years on this side, um, you become a little bit more creative on what's, what's an acceptable middle point mm -hmm. um, because you start to understand that 
you know, the change that you just asked for requires two hours of engineering time, or sorry, 200 hours of engineering time. That's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's uh, through it, you start to really have to understand what do you prioritize and, and where are you willing to put those those stakes in the ground or those lines in the sand um, because you can't fight every fight. You're never going to no. win. Um, so really understanding what's actually going to move the needle versus what is considered best practice mm-hmm. um, is usually where it, it's once you're able to start having those conversations, you're going to be able to have much more success with your clients. Uh, and frankly, you're just going to have a better day because yeah. things are actually going to start moving. Yeah. Um, But I think that does kind of force you to, you know, on agency side, I think there's a responsibility of ours to try to understand our client's business, to understand the other factors that are at play. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because when they hire us, sure, we're probably focused only on SEO, uh, but we are not that company's only concern, right? There's there's other channels in marketing. They have engineering teams. They have product teams. There's just, you know, brand teams, man, the number of times I have come up against big walls because the brand is, is, um, you know, no, we're going to do it this way because that's who we are. Mm -hmm. You know, you just have to really balance all of those things and understand that these are just people and, (laughs) and a a company is a living thing. And you can't, like I say, you can't fight every fight. Um, so I don't know if that really answers your question. No, it, that's it, kind of where it, my mind goes. It, 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 pick it, it, them well. It's, um, I, that's why sometimes I find it, um, sometimes it's nice to have an overall strategy for SEO. Other times, it's literally just a case of seeing what can be done. So taking it in smaller chunks, right? And I've, uh, so I've worked both client-side agency and now as a, as a contractor. And I find that you have this um, issue with implementation, whether you're client side or um, agency side, there is this big barrier of implementation. And that's because as SEOs, we we focus a lot on on hard skills, right? The skill set of SEO or the Mm -hmm. art and science of SEO, some, some might say. And that's great, but we still require non-SEOs in order to implement what we're recommending. Otherwise, it's just a recommendation on um, a digital, on, on the cloud somewhere, right? So it's always a case of, okay, mm-hmm. we have a recommendation, exactly. but we still need to have the recommendations implemented. And that battle is is not had within SEOs, it's had outside of SEO, i.e. outside of the SEO department. And unless you can have those departments on board, it's going to be a very, very difficult um, time <laughs> I, with implementation. Yes, no. How long would you say it takes Absolutely. a roughly to implement recommendations? Uh, well, as always, uh, it's SEO, so it depends. Um, yeah. No, uh, I could give a much better answer than that. Um, so I... Uh, it really, so I will say the the part of it depends for that answer really comes back to how thorough do I make my documentation? So, I, you know, and I think that's something that all oh, SEOs that I love that you're bringing up, like there is kind of the soft skills that we need to work on because whether you're in-house mm-hmm. or agency side, it's still a services kind of business that we're in, right? Yeah. We're still dealing with, we're still working with people. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when I say it really depends on the documentation, it, it really comes to how much or how well have I communicated the value of something? And then kind of also understood like, am I asking for a two hour change or a 200 hour change? Cause I think there are times where like, I can call myself out and say, I have asked for ridiculous things. <laughs> um, and somebody needed to come back and say, please calm down. Um, but I will say on the whole for, you know, now that, you know, at, at Grey Dot, I'm really fortunate. I get to work with some really fantastic clients. I work directly with engineering teams um, because I am oh. a developer myself. Uh, sometimes they give me repo access and I make the changes for <laughs> wow. them. Um, so typically we are seeing, you know, for the majority of my clients, uh, it takes less than a quarter to get some pretty wow. big technical changes made. Mm. Now I say that and I absolutely have had other clients where 
uh, like for one, uh, they're a, a Fortune 250 retailer, and there was a huge problem with how their canonical tags were being rendered. Um, and the, you, all the URLs that were being generated because it was an e-commerce store. So they just had, you know, just millions upon millions of variations of URLs. Um, and it was a limitation of the CMS that they were on. And we just had to have a point blank conversation of like, this CMS isn't going anywhere for two years. Mm. So it, and actually they still haven't moved to the new CMS yet. So we're still trying to figure out like, what are the other tools in our toolbox that we can use to kind of help with all this duplicate content issue? The fact that we're running out of crawl budget, right? So, um, yeah, I, I'd say, you know, obviously it can really run the gamut, but for most of my clients, we're, uh, we do like quarterly tech initiatives mm -hmm. um, as far as like, hey, we're going to implement this like really huge automated structured data plan that we want to do where, you know, there's structured data on almost every single kind of content and we're doing a lot of entity mapping and we're making sure that these things are really intertwined um, to hey, we're doing an entire uh, blog refresh and we're going to recode how the blog is is done. And and so, yeah, usually larger initiatives, smaller things like, hey, I need this redirect fixed. Uh, you've got, you know, a WordPress loop uh, that is causing a lot of issues on page speed. Those typically take less than a month to get implemented. Right. Yeah. So the whole idea of it taking six months to show results, that is not necessarily the case, right? <laughs> But I uh, sometimes it, it is. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and actually, I love it because uh, I just had a meeting with a client yesterday, um, and we were reviewing their Q4 performance, which uh, they are an e-commerce client. And what's really interesting is, uh, well, kind of like all e-commerce, November looked terrible, and then December really surprised us, and it was great. <laughs> Um, but we were talking about why that might be, and so changes that we made in June and July. We saw, and uh, funny, it actually has to do with structured data. We got structured data around their ratings and reviews for their products that had been previously not in the rendered, uh, that had previously required JavaScript rendering for it to be in the in the structured data. So it wasn't always mm -hmm. being accepted, but we got it into the source code. So uh, because of that, we implemented in early July, we started seeing higher click-through rates on our product listings really by the end of July and early August. Mm -hmm. um, however, we saw huge increases in December. Um, so we were even having the conversation about like their small wins that we can usually measure right. relatively quickly for things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it, it took six months to really see like, holy moly, this particular product, you know, it's a seasonal business, but like, let's say this particular product usually had a 12% click through rate mm. for Q4 of last year. And we hopped up to like an almost 30% click through rate. Like that's phenomenal, right? So mm -hmm. um, I would say it's a little bit of both that I think there are some, there are often some leading metrics that you can identify relatively quickly, um, mm -hmm. provided that you've got good signals and Google is crawling you often and you're not confusing the heck out of them with lots of other technical debt or issues going on. Mm -hmm. um, but it still might take six months to see like, bam, the effect. Yeah. Um, so, a little, yeah. little bit of both. <laughs> <laughs> I always feel for um, SEO's client side or brand side because they have the, um, the, the battle, <laughs> their forefront in a battle within the, the business, right? So, let's say me as a, mm -hmm. uh, let's say I'm a, a, a client side SEO. I have to go through this arduous battle and I'm the only SEO within the business. I have to go through this arduous battle of trying to convince the business to invest in SEO. I finally do that, have a budget, have an agency on board, and then I go back to the business saying, actually, we kind of need more budget because we need to have things implemented by several departments and they don't want to use any of their budget. <laughs> so there is, the, again, this battle, mm -hmm. and I find that in-house of client-tied SEOs are cons constantly battling um, for SEO. And it's a, a lot of their time is spent mm -hmm. um, battling uh, either department or the business. What would you say they can do for the business or show the business um, from an SEO point of view, why they should invest in SEO and 
focus on actually implementing SEO recommendations? Sure. Uh, great question. Um, and some, that is something that we partner with our point of contacts pretty often on, mm -hmm. uh, because it is exactly like you say, like they finally got the budget for an agency. So now we get to work together. Um, but when we are moving for like, Hey, that, that structured data plan that we implemented for those products, I, I took a lot of resources from their engineering team. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, I, I think, you know, definitely if you have an agency, ask them for support. Um, we are often really good. Like we, we have to spend a lot of time educating the client sometimes too. Right. So mm -hmm. your agency may already have resources. They may already have case studies, benchmarks, you know, any kind of reporting that can help you prove that, uh, or, or maybe not prove, but help support that, Hey, this is a worthwhile endeavor. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I would say, like, uh, also keep in mind, this is something I love for whether your agency side, client side, doesn't matter. If you have wins, keep documentation because you never <laughs> yeah. know when you might need that again. Yeah. Right. So maybe you're at one company, you go to the next one and you're like, hey, we did this one thing and it worked really well. You know, obviously don't get yourself into any issues with intellectual property or giving away, you know, company secrets. Uh, but certainly keeping that record, um, your agency probably will have access to that. So if you have one, that's great. Um, but other than that, really looking at the data. So that's definitely been one of the things for, I guess, my, my tougher clients to crack. Um, when we're able to like, let's say, all right, I want this project, but it's gonna require these kinds of resources and we need to get approved. So maybe I've got to earmark that for six months down the road. Uh -huh. In the meantime, what I am getting approved for, let's go ahead and start putting the, the data behind. All right, here's, here's what we found. Here's what we did. Here's how the data changed. Here's how the, the measurement changed. Because anytime you put data to it, you're always speaking management's language. Um, uh -huh. Whether yeah. it's you're reporting to financial, whether you're trying to get something from procurement, from product, doesn't matter. Uh -huh. Every manager, what... I guess I shouldn't say every because I'm sure there's an exception out there, but I've never <laughs> seen a manager not respond well to right, data. Right. Um, like as, as long as you have that um, and then also keep in mind, and I think this is just one of those soft skills as SEOs, as professionals, always bring it back to what is the business goal and use case. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, if you as a company have a goal of, I want to, you know, uh, penetrate this new market. I want to suddenly uh, have more German users, right? Yeah. Bring it back to that. If you can, if you can actually show how what you're asking for will help the company reach that goal, mm. you're 10 times more likely to be successful because you're speaking their language. Yeah. You're going according to what is someone else's priority. And I think that's something that can be a gap in SEO is we're so focused in the weeds because there's so much, right? Yeah, so for so. client side SEOs, I'm like, I don't know how you do all that. Because, and normally they're not just SEO, right? They're wearing so many exactly, different yeah. hats and it's like, how do you get anything done? Um, but yeah, really just recognizing that people are people and they've got their own priorities and they've got their own things on their, their annual reviews that they're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And if you can really bring the empathy of, hey, I know that this is something you're struggling with. Here's how I can help. And then vice versa, you know, they're gonna, they're also gonna wanna come back and help you. Mm -hmm. So it's really just about bringing that empathy to the workplace um, and recognizing that we're all people, regardless of what position they're in, whether it's an engineer, a product manager, your compliance team and lawyers, we're all just people. <laughs> so, yeah. It's, um, what you just said made me think of um, uh, a situation I once had. I contracted at a um, well-known vacuum cleaning business or product, um, vacuum cleaning product business. And the management were all gone ho on SEO. So they had bought into SEO, very keen on SEO. However. Love that. They, yeah. Brilliant, right? Oh no! There was <laughs> there was an issue um, operationally, and the issue led to a lot of um, infighting 
because operationally mm. you had SEOs and they weren't actually it wasn't actually an SEO person it was someone who was responsible for SEO right so they weren't SEO before they were just somehow given SEO responsibilities and they become they became an SEO officially for the business right and whenever they spoke with departments um, and this happened with more than one department they always got pushed back saying that's an SEO problem. It was never an issue of actually this is a company or business problem and here is how I can help from my department, my point of view. Everyone was very siloed on their own area and I find, uh, it made me realize at that point that SEO, because it's so new and almost as a, seen as a black magic type of industry, people shun away from it totally. and they, they don't want anything to do with it. So they consider SEO as SEO thing. They don't, and even with the terminology, I still to this day hear people use phrases like um, SEO keywords, not keywords, SEO keywords, right? So saying <laughs> that's an SEO pro issue right there. They never want to integrate. How do you go about, um, how would you suggest in-house or client-side SEOs liaise with different departments without having to point fingers and say this issue was caused by the development, the dev mm. department, so it's their issue. Because it creates a lot of resentment. And I think as SEOs, we're the ones who need to lead. But coming back to what you mentioned earlier, soft skills is not where it should be as an industry. So how would you go about navigating that? Sure. And I, I do want to say, I think the soft skills uh, will come as we mature as a profession. Mm -hmm. um, so I do think that's just something that comes with with being so young as yeah. as, as an industry. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that actually. Um, so this is a pretty common question that pops up in the women in tech SEO community. And so I love this conversation. Um, and uh, I'm going to share a success story of one of them, uh, Annette Pohl, who uh, works in-house for a company in Germany. Mm -hmm. um, she started doing, uh, you know, she had to go to our managers and get approval, but she started doing little like SEO Q&As and almost like a masterclass for right. the different departments in her company. And she has seen such success from that. Um, like she'll she'll get in and just like really be celebrating on she's been able to get things done because of those. Mm. So I think that's actually a great idea. So shout out to Annette. It's a fantastic strategy uh -huh. um, that I think it's really about, you know, like I say, go to those higher ups, uh, get the approval. And if you can get like 30 minutes in front of the engineering team or in front of the product team once a quarter. Um, then that gives you an opportunity to say like, hey, this is why this matters to you. Because I think a lot of times, um, and I've, I've taught some courses for clients doing things like this. And a lot of times what happens is um, like with engineers, they just didn't even realize what SEO was producing. And it's like, right. hey, it's only like 80, generating 80% of the revenue. So you know what <laughs> paycheck you've got? It's important, <laughs> right? Um, so obviously there's much more tactful ways to, to bring that up. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, it, and also there's a lot of times I find that when, like I say, when you link it back to what what is that goal for that larger department? So, um, and figuring out where you can help. So this is actually one of the things that I really love to do. Like when working with product teams, there's a lot of times where I like to spend time showing them how like, hey, yeah, we do all this keyword research and it probably looks really boring and mundane and da 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 da. But also, did you know that I can use keyword research to help inform your product roadmap? Mm -hmm. To help you identify features that customers are looking for or that competitors customers are looking for to grab that business. Because right, what is product wanting to do? They're wanting to add on to their roadmap. They're wanting to have the best in class offering, you know, whatever it is, there's probably a goal that they have. And when you show that, hey, we can actually work together, mm -hmm. um, I find people get a lot more invested. Um, and I think that's uh, uh, kind of a, like a personal goal of mine is is really educating companies on how 
SEO and really a lot of the research that we do can be applied to so many areas of your business. Yeah. Um, so I think that's something that's really cool because basically at the end of the day, keyword research is trillions of data points of consumer intent mm -hmm. and it's mostly free, <laughs> right? There are of course paid tools and things like that, but and, you know, you still have to like weigh trends and what's going on in social media. And, you know, it's not flawless. Right. Mm. Um, but, you know, when you're looking at marketing research, it's usually like a six month to 12 month project. It's at least six digits in the cost. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you could do like ten thousand dollars of keyword research and figure out like, oh, we want, you know, I, I think one of my favorites was um, we had a mortgage company who was like, we want to grow to look like these X, Y and Z competitors. And so we used keyword research and then we also did some things like looking on LinkedIn and trying to figure out how large their competitors marketing departments were to be mm -hmm. like, hey, you guys want to grow to this? They have 300 marketing employees. You have 40. <laughs> There's a gap, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, so just using those kinds of techniques. Um, that's something that when talking with those other departments, I have found that when I offer up some of that information and it usually only takes like a few hours to find some nuggets. <laughs> yeah. Um, then that's usually a way for you to get in and really start talking about what is the value of SEO for them. Um, they get a little bit more bought in and then, you know, as you need their help to execute things, they suddenly understand that there is real value in this channel. It is not just a cost center like an advertising channel or, you know, any kind of out of home costs. Mm -hmm. There's, there's some real gems in there and, and something that can actually be useful for them. Yeah. That's why so I, hopefully that answers your question. That was very uh, long and winded. No, that was that was beautiful because it's, it's something that I advocate for um, all the time because it takes more than SEOs to actually make SEO uh, a success. And I think it's down to SEOs to demystif demystify SEO uh, for non SEOs and have their awareness of SEO reach a certain level where they are comfortable um, not creating issues uh, inadvertently, I should say, um, for SEO. Because by the time, let's say a tech audit, by the time an SEO does a tech audit, the issue has already occurred and it's already a problem. Ideally, if you can get, mm -hmm. if you can reach a point where you're preventing an issue from happening. And I know a number of brands who now very um, purposefully focus on this approach. Um, a preventative approach. Mm -hmm. By the time you get to that approach, you're, um, you have a, a, a streamlined approach of marketing. And not just marketing, because I think SEO um, is more than a marketing channel. Like you just mentioned, you can use I it agree. for research. It's a development channel as well. And the earlier you can buy, and buy in, invest in, and also manage SEO, the better off you'll be. As long as you have a website, as I like to say, that's an acquisition-based site, you need SEO. <laughs> Whether it's for a preventative yes. course or to actually get more uh, traffic, it's, it's uh, something that's, that's needed. So to treat it as a marketing channel, and sometimes as the uh, last stop within the marketing channel, is very, it's unfortunate. <laughs> it's on. It's it's very unfortunate. I would agree. Yeah. No. Uh, I definitely agree. Uh, I do love kind of the shift that's happening in the industry right now, where SEO is starting to become treated more like product mm, yeah. as opposed to marketing. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, I will say uh, the you know most of the times that we you know we do have clients where we are part of the QA process, like you say, of like, can we prevent this from going live? <laughs> um, but the majority of the time that that has happened, I'm trying to think if there are any exceptions and I can't think of any right now. Um, that brand or that team or an engineering manager, somebody has had an experience where they didn't tell the SEO team about something or there was no S SEO QA. And so things went live and unfortunately a lot of things broke and traffic tanked. Um, it's like I do yeah. have one client. We are now in every single QA ticket. We are part of the QA process. Um, and that's because at some point last year, they accidentally introduced a bunch of duplicate subdomains. 
Mm, nice. <laughs> I was like, guys, you have to tell me before you do this. Yeah. Um, so, like I say, it's it's unfortunate. I think there's uh, there's going to be a little bit of a learning curve before that's considered the norm. Mm. Um, but thankfully, we are starting to see, you know, we are starting to see brands recognize that. And then also people from those brands recognize it and yeah. are going other going, places. Yeah. So Great. I think yeah. everybody's got that SEO horror story yeah. if you're in QA. Yeah. It's once you get burned with SEO, you get to a point where you're thinking prevention. <laughs> and unfortunately, yes. unfortunately, besides the whole algorithm updates, there is a huge chunk of what happens to one's website that's in, that's controlled by the people that manage the website, i.e. the people within the business. So it makes sense that everyone involved mm -hmm. with the website has a certain level of awareness of SEO. As an agency, do you find that there is a huge value in um, things like um, workshops and training for um, not just SEOs, but also non-SEOs within uh, a business? Uh, absolutely. Uh, so that's actually, uh, thankfully, a nice chunk of our business. Um, I love to teach, and so does my partner, Tori. Um, so we do partner with our clients and provide training. Um, so, you know, for, for us, most of our clients, we're working with embedded SEO teams. So there's mm -hmm. already... The, the the company has already bought into SEO to some degree because right. they have, you know, a one to three person team on SEO, plus they've hired us as an agency to support. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we've, I think there's definitely something to be said about those education. So, uh, like, we've done courses that's just what's the SEO that matters to developers? Um, cause I will say the conversation I have with a developer is very different than the conversation <laughs> I have with like an editorial staff. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, I've, I've been fortunate. We got to run workshops for, you know, we've done it with, uh, news publishers. So working with their journalists on, you know, here's kind of the basics of on-page optimization. Um, and what you find they care about is when you show like, Hey, we took an example of this article that was written by Justin and it's not optimized, and this is how many people read it. And then this article we worked with Justin to optimize, and 10x people read it. So, you know, mm -hmm. they, they get really excited about that, yeah. of course. Um, <laughs> so I think there's huge value in it, because I think it's, it's, it's like you said, there's not, like, for SEO to be a department, you know, sure, but everything touches it, and vice versa, SEO can touch just about everything mm -hmm. um and we certainly like you say we we require other people to get our recommendations implemented yes. whether that's creative whether that's development um so yeah i think doing the workshops having that ready to go is always good um one of the things i love to advise other seos on is definitely uh, i think you were talking about it earlier getting to a place where you're comfortable enough with SEO to demystify it. Mm -hmm. um, I think every SEO, you know, maybe not juniors, let's not put so much pressure on them. You're learning. That's cool. Take your <laughs> yeah. time. Um, but have like a little, what, what is SEO and why does it matter? That's something you should always have in your back pocket. Um, yeah. That's a presentation. I've probably made about 50 different versions of them, <laughs> but man, I saved them all. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Because I think it's just, I think you're totally right with what you said earlier. There is a responsibility on our part to educate and and really reach across the aisle and and get cross-departmental uh, collaboration going. Mm -hmm. uh, because like you say, I think there's just, SEO is such a, a black box of what are you doing? I don't even know what your day looks like. Um, and so we, we really need to, to inform so that we can get that buy-in. Um, and also start seeing some really cool results. Yeah, absolutely. Ultimately. Now, yeah. with a lot of clients, they tend to have um, agencies working on different things, right? So you have an SEO agency, um, editorial agency, a dev agency. And there is always, <laughs> and I find this is always the case with SEO and dev, less so with SEO and uh, editorial slash content. I think my theory behind that, very quickly to segue, is that as an industry, we have a, a closer connection with um, content 
uh, teams rather than dev teams. And I think the way we communicate tends to be more geared towards uh, the way uh, content teams receive communication. Uh, SEO on devs is a, it's a very interesting dynamic. Even more interesting is when you have um, an SEO agency and a dev agency and they're competing with who is responsible for what issue. So that SEO agency will say, mm -hmm. well, this is an issue, we need developers to fix it. Um, let's say a developer just um, migrated a site and for some reason didn't have any 301 implementations. <laughs> and then comes the SEO yep. person, the SEO agency saying, this is highly important. Is this something that can be completed? And then there is this whole battle between the client, the SEO agency, and the dev agency. How do you go about um, helping the client resolve such a uh, potential conflict with different agencies? Yeah, and unfortunately it is something that we see pretty often, uh, especially when it comes to engineers, it all just comes back to documentation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's what I found, you know, that's really what engineers want. That's how they work. <laughs> um, so, you know, if we want them to do things, it kind of makes sense that we need to adapt to the way that they work. Yeah. Um, so I will say one of the other more popular uh, kind of training themes that we do is training SEOs on how to write tickets. Mm. Um, so whether that's going to be a Jira ticket or an Asana ticket, you know, whatever it is, but how do you write those user requirements um, and really speak the language of engineers, uh, which mm. I get to cheat at that a little bit because again, I'm a developer, I'm married to a full stack developer. Uh, so I get to deal with uh, SEO engineering <laughs> relationships uh, pretty much every day. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'd say it almost always comes down to documentation. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's funny how much of the SEO kind of soft skills, it, that's what it's about. Yeah. It's just stating your case, asking for what you want, okay? Like, what do you want the end result to be? Um, and I've often found that sometimes, especially with devs, just tell them what you want the end result to be. Don't be so prescriptive on how that's going to work. Mm. And the reason I say that is because I think there's a lot of times that we as SEOs were like, no, it should definitely happen this way and I need this exact code. No offense, guys, but you're not in the code repo. You do know, you do yeah. not know the code base. You don't you may not even know what language it's written in. So give your developers the chance to do what they do great, and that mm -hmm. is find solutions. And sometimes they might find something that is 10 times better than what you thought because frankly, they're a developer and you're yeah. not. Um, so yeah, being really clear about what are you looking for? Why does it matter? Um, I have found that if I link to the Google search guidelines, I get a lot less pushback <laughs> from developers on why does this matter? Yeah. Um, because you know, you're just using like, no Google said so, so please. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then also putting prioritization and like, cause if everything is a fire all the time, Nobody's going to believe that, right? It's the boy who cried right. wolf. Yeah. Um, so, you know, also have an honest conversation with yourself about like what's urgent and what's not. Um, like a migration and you need to fix 301 redirects, that's pretty big. Um, <laughs> you need to drop this .html URL path. Nobody really cares. It's not that big a deal, right? Like. So, so just being really honest about what actually matters, I think is important. And I think something that comes with practice as you're writing tickets, right. as you're doing that documentation. Um, yeah, and yeah, I, find... I, I will also say a lot of times, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, go, go for it. Oh, I was just gonna add, I like working with other agencies, there's a lot of times where I think like, sometimes there's ego in it or people are like, you're gonna try to steal my business. Nah, y'all, there's, there's plenty of business. Like, can we just put our egos aside and just like, let's do what's right for the client and like, it's gonna be fine. Yeah, I think that's where the fear comes in from the thought of this is going to take business away from it, from, from me. And even from an SEO point of view, thinking of it, um, you mentioned SEOs are sometimes very prescriptive, prescriptive. I absolutely agree. I find this is the issue with agencies or SEOs at agencies where they are um, 
they tend to be focused on the pillar, so they delve deeper into the pillar rather than thinking broader and thinking of the business. They delve deeper into the pillar just to, frankly, sometimes find things to 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 do to write as an issue and a solution. Because, uh, as an example, if you're if one is a um, tech SEO at an agency that covers only in tech. That is what they do. And every quarter, every business review, they have to find stuff to do, right? <laughs> so there's this tendency mm -hmm. to delve, to almost put on a developer hat. I've worked with a number of tech SEOs who think they're developers and they do have um, good development or developer um, 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 knowledge. But I think the way they approach it is I'm not a fan of being too prescriptive with what other people know better. <laughs> you know, I, exactly. I, think, I think that is something that SEOs need to get out of the habit of doing because I can see that being a, a, a line mine for a number of SEOs. For sure. Uh, I think, I feel like I see it a lot of times. Um, so yes, it happens with engineering, but I also see it a lot when it comes to like network security and then compliance and lawyers. <laughs> There's a lot of times the SEOs will be like, oh, you need this kind of HSTS policy. And it's like, do you have any idea what that means? <laughs> um, and like they, they have a network security admin. I'm, I'm willing to bet they've looked at this, you know, like it's. It's funny because I feel like, especially on agency side, there's so many times where it's like, hey, I am the SEO expert. Let me be that expert. Mm -hmm. We also need to let other people be the experts where they are. Yeah. Um, like, and thinking about lawyers and compliance, especially with like privacy compliance, GDPR, CCPA, everything that's coming out of Canada right now. You know, I, I think it's really good as SEOs and as marketers to be aware of what's going on. But at the end of the day, your legal team needs to decide what level of compliance they're going to align with, mm -hmm. right? Um, I still think there's a lot of education on our parts to to be able to have good conversations about how is that implemented and how does that affect my tracking and things like that. But I guess I let people be the experts in mm -hmm. the areas that they are. Yeah. Um, and if you don't do that, then why would anybody give you the same courteous courtesy? Exactly. exactly. They're not going to. Exactly. Completely agree. Completely yeah. agree. Now, to implement... People are just people. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Now, uh, to implement an SEO strategy, what would you say business leaders um, should know about SEO? Oh, what a good question. So business leaders, um, so I usually try to educate on uh, kind of the SEO funnel. So what are kind of the top level metrics that we're going after? Um, so, you know, and kind of those leading metrics. So just really simple, just walking them down the path of what is an impression to a click, to a user, to a conversion, right? Mm -hmm. Or a transaction. Right. Um, so really walking them through that process, um, building expectations that it does take time, right? It's not like paid. You can't flip it on and get <laughs> phone calls that, um, at lunch. Um, that's just not how it works. Mm. Um, so that that's usually it. Uh, I also usually like to teach them that there are, um, so there's a few different ways I think that you can separate SEO. The first being technical and content. Uh -huh. um, so I think it's important to, to show management teams that there is kind of often that delineation uh -huh. and not to say that an SEO can't do both. Uh, absolutely they can. Um, but also knowing like, hey, there are two really big pieces. There's what are we saying and can Google actually understand it, right? Uh -huh. the, it, those are two very big pieces that we need to talk about. The And then the other way that I like to kind of delineate or explain SEO to management is talking about like, we care about our authority. We care about showing that we are the experts, right? We care about being relevant, right? Uh, if we're selling dog toys and you wanna get on a blog post about you know, the benefits for your employees. That's not an S that's not for SEO, y'all. That's that's called PR. And that's fine. <laughs> right. But that has no SEO value. Yeah. Right. Um yeah, and then just that technical integrity. So again, just coming back to like these are the things that we're always going for, and as long as we're aligning for those, we should be moving in the right direction. Um mm. so uh yeah, those are often the things I really like to talk about. Um 
you know, for some management teams, we'll get into like, uh, what is intent behind keyword choice and what's kind of the power sometimes because it's just sometimes it just gets nerdy and fun and you can tell different executive teams that that find that fun and some that don't. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those are really the things I like to teach because I like to show like, hey, these these are the things that we care about. This is what we're measuring. Um, and oftentimes like for executive or management reporting dashboards, like here's the metrics I'm going to deliver to you. Mm-hmm. Everything else like bounce rate. You shouldn't care because we could talk about this, but like, it's not going to be a fruitful conversation Mm -hmm. where you're ranking. It's not going to be a fruitful Mm -hmm. conversation, right? Like, um, so really just building those expectations and showing what, you know, what are we doing to kind of track that bottom line? Um, cause at the end of the day, they're probably worried about like sales or customer retention. Um, so kind of like how, how do we guide them down the path to that? Um, and then, like I say, just ultimately, what are what are the things that are most important to us and what are we beholden to, a.k.a. Google's whims, um, <laughs> so they, you know, just kind of understand what's going on. Um, but I don't get into the technical weeds. I don't get into, you know, here's our entire content plan for the year. Uh-huh. No, they don't care. Sometimes yeah. they do. That's not fair. But like most of the time, they don't care. Uh, uh, they just want to know, find... like, are you doing things? Cool. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I find that sometimes letting them in with too much information can be quite dangerous. And from from an, as an industry, as for for example, um, we've given this impression to business leaders that SEO is all about uh, this specific thing, mainly being keywords, rankings, and links. And in fact, uh, pre um, pre Penguin, there was this perception that SEO was all about links before Pen- Penguin pretty much destroyed that thinking. So, but you know, business thank leaders God. think of SEO, <laughs> yeah, thank God, right? Business leaders think of SEO in, in that um, way of thinking. So, sometimes I think it's best just to give them the high level information and then focus on. Uh, uh, department leads and give them more information and also use department leads as support especially against business leaders exactly. because that is a that's a whole novel battle <laughs> right there <laughs> yeah uh, i agree and and actually i love that you bring up uh penguin because i will say uh i do often go into and like just educate on hummingbird and semantic search Mm-hmm. Uh, because of the number of times I have dealt with, uh, so I used to work in agencies that like specialized in small businesses. So usually our point of contact ended up being the business owner. Right. The number of phone calls I have fielded for like, well, I just looked this up and we're not ranking number one and your report yeah. oh, says we're ranking God, number yeah. one. And I'm just like, okay, yeah. okay, let's hold on. <laughs> like, um, and that's also why like a lot of times I, I don't even report on rankings anymore. Cause it's like, they're so volatile. The results are so personalized and really that semantic search is so powerful that it's not about, for me, I'm like, it's not about keywords. It's about ideas behind the keywords and what is the concept, right? Like, yes, we want to match the language of our user. That's an important piece of keyword research, but like this one keyword, it's never just one anymore. There's no. what? There's five, seven, a hundred variations that that can take, and then you put in long tail, and it's just there's there's so much there um, that I do like to talk about. Like I say, just semantic search. Um, also, just have some fun. If anybody remembers the days of like having to write a landing page for like, <laughs> oh my gosh, I remember I had one client. It was like commercial refrigerator. And then we had another landing page for commercial refrigerators. Um, also, I found that people have no idea how to spell the word refrigerator because you used to have a page dedicated to misspellings. Do you re- I don't know if you remember yeah, that. Yeah, I remember oh, it was that. awful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> there was this thinking that if, you're, if oh, you're bad at spelling, you're good SEO. I remember those days, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it was so good. Uh, yeah, and I also uh, I got to work with um, an aquarium for a little while. Man, the number of ways people smell, spell the word aquarium and then yeah. you add in like the Spanish as well and it's like lot no <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah I find yeah that, that is one thing I like to talk about because 
yeah. It's it's about content ideas and concepts. And I think mm-hmm. once you start to change your mindset from like individual keywords to topics, mm-hmm. um, it just becomes a much more fruitful conversation uh, with people w- with like management teams. I'm yeah. sorry, I interrupted. No, that's 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 good. I was just going to add to that saying the value of pages is far more important and what something that I encourage um, uh, business leaders to focus more on because they, I think, you mentioned speaking people's language and appropriating the way we SEOs communicate to the different uh, departments, right? I think business leaders, they understand the concept of um, um, assets and viewing pages um, as assets. So you say the home page is mm-hmm. an important asset. This direct category page is an important asset. And when they think of it as assets, they think of the different um, ways that that asset can be improved, i.e. the different uh, marketing channels and them working closer together. I found that that's something that's very effective with, uh, with business leaders. Yes, I agree. And I think that's part of that change to approaching SEO with a product mindset as opposed yeah. to just like a marketing and cost channel. Exactly, yeah. Um, because it is at the end of the day, like if you're an e-commerce company, SEO is absolutely a product for you mm-hmm. because it is directly generating revenue. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I, I love that you brought that up because, yeah, it's, it's all about, you know, I, I think as SEOs, we have a job of speaking the languages of our colleagues within the companies, but then we also have to figure out how to speak the language of our customers. Yeah. Um, and so there's a lot of like translation and, and localization huh? uh, that we have to do um, <laughs> just the across the board. And, and I. Sorry, go ahead. Go for it. It's. Oh, no, I'm just saying like we, we just have to spend a lot of time being translators <laughs> at the end of the day, yeah. uh, which can be very tiring. Um, yeah, it's it's a lot, but it's it's rewarding when it works. Yeah. Exactly. It's it's when it works. It's so it's worth it, and it gets easier over time. I that's that's one thing for sure. Sam, tell me about O S E O O. And I love that. Oh, I love uh, I yes. love saying so, it that way <laughs> because it's one of those. No, it's good. Um, uh, yes. So <laughs> go for it. Oh, yeah. Uh, no. So uh, OSEO uh, stands for Opinionated SEO Opinions. It is a video series uh, that's run by uh, my partner and I, so Tori Gray, and I uh, just kind of get on and talk about random things. And we also will feature guests. Um, it's usually moderated by G- Begum Kaya, who also is the one I wrote mm-hmm. the structured data piece with. Um, yeah. But yeah, we just have a lot of fun and it's our way to kind of tackle a lot of the it depends answers that happen in SEO. Um, we try to dig into why does it depend and how do you go about making the right decision based on mm. your needs. Um, and then, yeah, we've we've been fortunate to have some really cool guests lately. Um, yeah, we just have fun. And anytime you have questions, you can send them into our website. Uh, yeah, it's just really fun. So check it out. Awesome. I'll be sure to add the link um, in the description. Um, awesome. Now, it's the start of the year. What are you looking forward to from yes. a business point of view? Uh, so I have determined that this is the year, uh, so just from a personal perspective, that I learned how to delegate better. Um, <laughs> right. I have been a bottleneck for most of my career, and I'm going to try to be better <laughs> at that. Um, SEO wise, I am excited about this movement of going back to to really, uh, you know, showing your expertise and what you're talking about and possibly like speak less, but speak more effectively. Right. So mm-hmm. I love that in recent years, it's no longer the game of post 500 blog posts. It's really a game of <laughs> post quality content. Yeah. Um, and I do also think like with everything going on with AI, I think, you know, chat GPT, it's very exciting. I think it's another tool in the tool set. I don't think it's an end all be all solution. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I am neither a naysayer nor an all for it. <laughs> I think, like I said, I think it's just another tool set that, that we can leverage to try to become more effective. Um, I am a little concerned with chat GPT and really just all the AI generation and content. How does that affect the growth for junior SEOs and kind of the new generation? Um, 
But yeah, overall, I'm just excited that we're we're continuing to get to this place, I think, where it's like think smaller in terms of how large your website needs to be and just think more effectively. Uh -huh. um, yeah, just just really honing in on what what matters, what do you actually have the authority to speak to? And if you don't, maybe stop trying. <laughs> um, Cause you know, I think something that really the last two years we've been talking as an industry so much about internal linking and how that works into indexation or indexing. I could go on a separate rant about that particular <laughs> keyword, that particular word choice. I'm just gonna say language evolves y'all, just accept that. Um, but uh, as I say, y'all, it's perfect. Um, <laughs> But all of that being said, uh, you know, there's been so much conversation about it because, you know, I think about, I think even just five years ago, you could post anything and it would get indexed. And that's not something that we can take for granted anymore, um, which I think it, it's actually really cool because I feel like for for me as an agency, I'm able to have more fruitful and productive conversations with my clients um, and just be really candid sometimes where I'm like, yeah, you want to post that fluff piece? Perfect. It's called PR. Has no bearing on SEO. Go for it, right? Um, you know, I, and there's still value in those things, but just understanding that, like, where's where's the line? Um, and like I say, just not being able to take getting indexed for granted anymore. I'm actually mm -hmm. really excited about because um, I think it it demands that we be better, and I like that. Yeah, yeah, agreed. The next, um, I think two maybe even three years is going to be very pivotal especially for for google i think um especially the way they handle ai um chat gbt I agree. Um, gpt rather um but also ai as a whole the way they address that is going to be very very um pivotal for the industry now yeah i, I think so it's uh it's really interesting to see how much google is struggling like i i just think they they have had a rough year. 2022 mm. was a rough year for them. I'm also kind of excited. At, like, I'm excited to see what happens with Microsoft and the Bing yeah. AI that they're introducing. And I'm like, are you guys going to have better results? Are we finally going to have a competitor? <laughs> That'd be exciting. I um, think this could it's also be terrifying, the... But exciting. <laughs> <laughs> this, this could be what takes away from their market share. And I think this is a le legit threat to them since they dominated um, Yahoo so yeah it's it's exciting times ahead I, 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 I think now lastly um, when hiring an agent um, hiring an SEO uh, you, uh, your agency what are the um, let's say an SEO who's client facing what are they the hard skills that you look for and soft skills that you look for um, so if it's someone who's client facing, uh, I'm definitely going to prioritize soft skills over the hard skills. Um, that actually a lot of times for my account managers and anybody who is going to be, you know, handling the relationship, I look for retail or food and beverage experience. Um, mm -hmm. So that's just something that I'm like, you've learned how to deal with people and you've learned how to deal with difficult people. Uh, <laughs> now, also, I am in a very fortunate position that if I have clients who are let's say less than stellar to my team, uh, we will no longer work with them. Um, I recognize that that is a, a position of luxury and may not always be uh, something that I can capitalize on. Uh, but I think that is important. Um, but yeah, really just being able to, to talk to people is probably the biggest thing, I think, client side. Um, hard skills, uh, you know, do you have a basic understanding of what SEO is? Um, I've been fortunate in my career, I have trained dozens upon dozens of people in SEO. Mm. So uh, for me, it really is all about the soft skills. I, I want to know that you have a hunger to learn because if you don't want to be constantly learning, SEO is not for you. <laughs> it changes too often. Yeah. Um, and that's okay. Like we can find <laughs> you something else. Um, but yeah, I, I think, um, you know, I, if you're going for content, then I think there's obviously some hard skills just in being able to communicate and write that are important. Mm -hmm. I can't teach writing, but technical, like, uh, there's so many things in SEO that are teachable that to me, it's yeah. actually all about the soft skills is why I hire someone. Mm -hmm. um, 
Because yeah. yeah, hard skills, those can be learned. Or yeah. or we figure out like, hey, maybe you're not really good at content audits, but you're fantastic at keyword research. And then this other team member is the opposite. So you're just going to mm. share work together. Like I think there's uh -huh. just identifying people's strengths and weaknesses. Um, yeah, it's all about that's one of the, that's one of the be beauties of SEO, right? There's so so many areas that one can one can focus on. Sam, yes, it's huge. Yeah, <laughs> where can people find you online? Oh, great question. Uh, so uh, I am still on Twitter. We'll see what's happening there. Uh, but you can find me uh, at Sam Torres ATL. Um, I'm also on LinkedIn. Um, company website, the gray dot company. Uh, we're pretty active. We try to be pretty active in the community. Um, for anybody who's listening or watching and identifies as female, please, please, please join the women in tech SEO, uh, community, uh, founded by Raj. It is incredible. Uh, you can definitely find me on there. Um, I'm also in traffic think tank, big SEO. Uh, yeah, try, try to be around as much as possible. Uh, but Twitter and LinkedIn are usually the best places to find me. Awesome. I'll be sure to have those links in the uh, description. Sam, Fantastic. thanks so much for yeah, your time. I'll send this your way. And thank you. This was so I, much fun. Yes, an hour goes by very quickly, doesn't it? <laughs> it flies by. It sure does. <laughs> well, brilliant. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll be sure to um, have those description, have those links in the description, and we'll we'll get in, we'll be in touch um, again soon. Sounds great. Brilliant. Cheers. Have a good one. You too. Bye.